Today, I'm standing in for Teresa Pridemore as host. That's, this is what that looks like. Well, I'm, I'm sitting in, not so much standing. Uh, and I'm Adrienne Gunn. Oh, that's who I am. I'm Adrienne Gunn, breakthrough specialist and baggage assassin. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Are you excited? I think you seem excited. I'm excited to introduce to you our next speaker, uh, Lady Doom, also known as Agnes Dominski. I thought that I asked them to keep that part out of the thing. I'm not fond of my given name. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. So, so, mm -hmm. then, so then you want us to all then call you Lady Doom? Yes, please. Okay. I, you know, many- If you want to live, that is really the preferred moniker that I would ask. Fair. Mm -hmm. I would love, I would love none other than to fully live and respect- I mean, you seem like quite a nice, capable woman, I, I would like you to live as well. So thank you. And thank you for the introduction. I don't- Absolutely. Mean, gracious. This is just a clarification that we must make. Perfectly well. I also, I'm hoping, I, they sent over your, Lady Doom, they sent over your bio, I'm hoping- is this a good time for that? You want people to know who you are? Oh, please. And there's nothing I love more than an, an excellent, thorough introduction to my greatness. Certainly. And you, watching, you want to know who Lady Doom is. I'm sure we're all excited uh, on the edges of our seat that you can't see, but I'm sitting. Alrighty. So, Lady Doom inspires uber villains worldwide, seeking to help every budding villain fully embrace, the, embrace their own inner evil genius. Good, good Freudian slip there. Right? Yeah. Embrace them. That should yeah. happen too. Wow. All right. I've got this. She's a breakthrough coach whose primary focus is to help the hardworking, gifted people who once walked in the shadows to master their power and conquer the world. Mostly, she works with women who wish to step into the world of villainy uh, to, to fully own their power and trample anyone who gets in their way. Yes. Okay. Uh, other than this is not a latte, her catchphrase is, it's time to be boldly, unapologetically, awfully you. Yes. It's, it's pretty I do say those things, both of them. It's, right. It's a strange phenomenon that everywhere I go and ask for a latte, they always get it wrong. Yeah. I, I have... I have a similar problem with uh, chai. Uh, I think those are lattes as well. I'm like, who? Oh, whose standards? I, I suppose it is a, a, a form of latte. I don't know why you would drink a chai when you could have a delicious coffee beverage. But yes, sure. I think it is a, a kind of latte. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't like to yuck anyone's yum, even if it's, you know, mm. disgusting. But okay, but there's still more. So oh, like, like, yes, of course, there's I, more. I want to make sure we know you fully. So like most women in business and villains in development, she started her practice with the hard hustle. After many years of struggle, trial and error, she landed on the doomtastic brand and evil swagger, her own unique mantle of power that hypnotizes people to love and fear her today. Those who follow her dark footsteps call themselves dominions. And you can drink her sour Kool-Aid by following her on Instagram uh, at the Lady Doom. That's that's pretty great. Do you actually have uh, a, like a beverage endorsement? Because uh, I don't. No, I mean it's it's. If I had my own form of beverage, that would be even more ideal than I could refer to my drink. But you know, it's a catchphrase. Drink. I love it. Mm. Sour Kool-Aid. I love it, it. Mine would be sour. There would be no sugar in mine. Fair. I mean, I, if, 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 it, if it was just a thing, I'd pop it up on Amazon. It sounds... Sounds like a thing, doesn't it? It's true. It does sound like a thing. Pretty delicious. Yeah, okay, so... That, we should get that, work, that worked out after... Well, after and you can easily sell it on Instagram. This People are true. always buying oh, new cool. beverages at mm. like four in the morning on Instagram, right? Would you like to be one of my minions? You have so many excellent ideas. Oh, yeah, sure. Like... Very good. Yeah, groups are yeah, fun. I, I, it pays... A modest sum, but it does pay. I love affiliate marketing. Well, we can get you hooked up. Right on. Sweet. Let's do that. Mm. So I want to I wanna jump in here. It says here that we're talking today about, well, the topic you, you've, you've sent in, embrace your inner evil genius. Yes. Did I get that right? Yes. I just want to make sure because yes. earlier. Absolutely okay. Absolutely what we're talking about today. 
embrace your inner evil genius. So let's get in it. Let's, um, so I love language. I love words. So talk to me more about, let's break it down. Genius specifically. Uh, tell me about what you mean by genius and why you think that's important for success. Well, I think by now, just about everyone has seen Liz Gilbert's talk on genius. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's something that we can view as outside of ourselves and everyone has access to this genius, but most people are not utilizing it fully. Okay. You know, it's just scratching the surface, just a little dollop whip of the genius that they could be having on their latte, of course. Mm -hmm. But in fact, there's so much more to be reaped. And frankly, there are so many things that people let get in the way of accessing their full genius. Sure, sure. Do you have, do you have a couple examples of, of these barriers to genius? Barriers to genius, uh, over consciousness, of being overly conscious, you know, being obsessed with integrity to the degree that one doesn't actually move forward at all. Oh, that's fair. I've seen that. You know, um, being really concerned about other people to the degree that one is not in, at all self-centered or able to connect with the genius that's available to them because it's so outside of the confines of what they think is appropriate. Okay. For me, for instance, I mean, sure. look at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have fully accessed my genius. And how have I done that? I have overcome my need to be nice. Oh, you know, I've heard a lot about this. I, perhaps, perhaps you at home relate to, God, why am I so nice all the time? The way in which the world can trample over you because of lack of boundaries or what politeness or, or standards look like. So you're saying what gets in the way of some people's genius is being too nice. Absolutely. Can you tell me more about these moments? Well, or do you want to talk about clients or would you like to personalize it in your own journey of what happened for you when you stopped doing that? Yes, well... What you see before you, you know, my terrifying glamour that you mm. see before you could only have been achieved if I had chosen to not be concerned with how people look at me when I'm crossing on a four-way crossing in my car and causing accidents because, you know, the hair, the makeup. People do a double take. Things happen in the world. And then, oh, we feel so bad. Look at what I did. I should never wear the makeup again. No, wear the wig, wear the makeup. Let people get in accidents around you. It doesn't matter. That's not any of your business. And for me, getting over that tendency to want to care for others. You see, I'm a mother and I have, you know, I have a life like everyone else. I have had to fight my way to the top like mm -hmm. everyone else. It's been a struggle. The struggle is real. But when I let my concern for other people get in the way, I always self-sabotaged, got knocked back two steps because, oh, what will they think if, if I do this? Or will people get FOMO if they see how amazing my life is on Instagram? Let them yeah. get FOMO. I had to come to that for myself. Let them get FOMO. Let them make whatever judgments they will make. And yeah. then I was finally able to grow my online empire for my business. That is awesome. So you're saying that when you chose, regardless of other people's responses and, and reactions to the you you were putting out in the world, you were able to feel more free and able to connect to your genius. Yes, absolutely. Great and you're summary. able you were able to help other people do the same. Yes, yes. I mean, ultimately, you know, there are so many people out in the world of integrity, the integrity market, you know. I've, uh, I've heard a lot about it, yes. Yes, they're, they're actually very evil curious, let me tell you. I oh. should know. They're very evil curious, and they too want to reap the benefits of playing in the evil playground. And here's the thing. If you, I, I model that, I model what that success looks like, that sense of purpose and drive and that sense of being grounded and 
in your own power mm -hmm. so that others may see for themselves, I too can have that kind of natural hypnotic charisma. I believe modeling that is very important. However, you, wherever you fall on the evil spectrum, you know, perhaps it's only a, a little bit of a secret inner evil that you hold inside of you so that you can get through your day, so that you can perhaps not take that email that has nothing to do with you personally. <laughs> yes. You yeah. know, so that you yeah. can actually get your day done instead of spending the next three days, you know, really overly thinking about it, talking to all your friends about it. Oh, that person, that client was terrible, blah, blah, blah. Just let it go. They are not worth your time and attention. And if you harness a little evil inside of you, then you can know that. And then spend that next three days conquering, making money, profit first. Yes. So there's so many ways that this has an impact. It's interesting you're mentioning this. In, in a lot of the work I do, there's this Jungian concept of the shadow, right? The way in which people can sometimes believe, like at integrity, Maybe high high vibe or the high vibe is the audience that we're speaking to today. Yes. It's who you are at home. So the the ways in which focusing only on integrity and only on whatever this this high whatever they mean by high vibe, if you are denying a part of yourself, yes. occasionally that gets in the way and clogs your ability to be successful and fully expressed. And uh, you mentioned Liz Gilbert earlier. Uh, one of Liz Gilbert's friends and, and other people love this woman, Brene Brown. Perhaps you've mm. seen her talk and I read about her. I've also read Brene Brown's books, yes. She talks quite a lot about the fact that you cannot indiscriminately numb emotions, right? So if you're, if you're tamping down evil, you're also tamping down your access to any other emotion along the spectrum. You, you mentioned there's a, a spectrum of evil and, and, and people that are evil curious, I think you said. Yes. Yes. So in, in, in your own life or, or in the people that you work with, what do you see happening? What are the, what are the pitfalls of denying your own evil? Very good question. There are so many pitfalls. I find that most people really lie to themselves about how much darkness they have inside. And I feel like you've called that out very well in your introduction in this question. And <clears throat> there are so many pitfalls to denying that because it will always sneak up on you. <laughs> okay, and it's yeah, yeah. better to fully own it and embrace it and honor it so that it can serve you as it's meant to, so that you can be free. Because ultimately, honoring your darker intentions, your darker side, we all have it. We mm -hmm. all have it. Mm -hmm. And you can run away from it all you like, but it still lives inside of you. Just as for me, my inner goody two shoes, my inner light side plagues me quite often, I have to admit. And I don't try to really shove her away. I joke about it, but ultimately she has to have her day. I mean, look, I love dolphins. I love dolphins. I'm an evil villain. I love dolphins. What can I yes. say? I fully integrate my light side into this persona you see here. Right. In fact, I love animals in general. I really do. I just don't like people very much, right. you know, yeah. which you would expect, I'm sure. But yes, there's, when you don't honor your shadow side, she will have her way with you. Yes. And for some people that shows up as like diseases and that sort of thing. You can get ill for mm -hmm. sure. Illness is one way. And, you know, have you ever had that situation where you are trying to be very good and on task and you're checking all the things off the list day after day after day, you're doing the things you're supposed to do. And then one day, you just bonk off. You just have to, sorry, it's a British term. It, oh, bonking, yeah. Yes, just to, you know, just kind of go off and do, your, do something out of the blue and you can't reel yourself back in. You have to watch Netflix all day. You have to, have to take long naps. Uh, perhaps you spontaneously just spend the whole week painting when you should be emailing clients back. Right, right. You so know, whatever it looks like for you. Because you had denied something. You denied your, your 
other side needing to come through. Right. You know? and, and I wouldn't say that there is a side of play to your shadow side. Your shadow side is that childlike instinct within you that wants to keep you in touch with life. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Doesn't yeah, I'm, I'm having visions actually of like that, the child aspect of the myth. Have you, have you watched children's television in a while? There's a lot of violence and cruelty. This is true. That shows up in child play. Yes. yes. I, I have so many scars, literally from, well, so many scars and traumas from childhood, but like literally like plastic toys, just scars on my face because children and part of their play, they're, they're quite um, violent and forceful. Mm -hmm. And it's, an, it's, a, it's a force that lives inside. It must, must come from somewhere naturally, right? Oh, certainly. And children are at ease with their shadow. It's adults that, you know, try to get them to stop. But if you think about it, you know, they are more integrated than perhaps most adults are. And I, my argument is that leaving your shadow behind is a, a surefire way to guarantee mediocrity. That's fair. So one of the, one of the biggest pitfalls then of denying or, or not learning to access and express your inner evil genius is that you just will suck. You'll just be terrible. Either you'll bonk off for a very long time, never fully achieving the things you set out to, or you're just, you're going to be mediocre. You're just mediocre. You're not very good. It does sound extreme. And, and yes, that's exactly what I was saying. But if you really think about it, how often do women in business, you know, I was one of them as well. We, we hesitate to shine fully because we're mm. afraid to take up all the air in the room. Right. We're afraid that we're going to step on toes or say the wrong thing at the wrong time and not be tactful and, you know, managing everyone else's expectations above our own needs and our own desire for expansion, our own desire to create our empire. We're afraid to be the tyrant and so, therefore, we always stay the minion to ourselves and others around us. Yeah. Well, it's funny that because what you're talking about even in the smallest ways, this, this fear of evil means that we allow people to interrupt us when we're wanting to get something across. We allow people to cut us off or just even the smallest thing, the fear of evil, our own evil is so large that it, it has us forgiving things and, and not participating in ways that aren't really that evil at all. Like if you were to expand your expression there's, there's a greater depth of evil one could get to without becoming not that, I mean, it's the spectrum of You don't have good. to be evil to be reap the benefits of being more evil. I know. Your list, the, what, you're, what you're telling me about is it doesn't, none of those things, none of those examples seemed all that evil to me at all. Certainly, it, but it, if you go inside and you think about that moment where you chose not to expand out, for instance, to take up all the air in the room. Mm -hmm. I feel that for many women, that voice sounds to them, the desire to be witnessed and to, to have everyone look at them and listen yes. and admire yes. them. Mm -hmm. That feels like ego. And ego is evil. Yes, that is one, one of the things we're told, that ego and, is evil. And that... It doesn't seem, it seems innocuous until, of course, the, what it must be evil. It must be extremely evil for that to hold us back so much. It must be truly an unliked, dark part of ourselves that we are denying in mm -hmm. order to, to please and placate everyone. There is some part of us that is calling it evil. That's true. Well, there's an interesting thing about... Um about how we develop as tiny humans. You know, certainly there's all these new theories that shouldn't be new that, that much, but like, you know, of, of whether you've hugged your child and how you engage as a, as a parental figure. These ideas though of, of how we mold and create humanity includes a kind of moralism of developing a good and a bad, the, the cartoons and the structure of the two, the evil and the angel on your shoulder. This, this programming, 
is what runs beneath the surface of most people. And it's what school reinforces. So all of us have been indoctrinated in our own particular differences of culture or religion, this good and evil construct, right? And I, and I imagine some of that is wonderful. It's part of evolution. It's part of, it's passed down for millennia so that we will survive. So we won't, you know, walk out into the street or do dumb stuff. But then it keeps us from doing amazing things, right? Absolutely. Couldn't, okay. couldn't have said it better myself, yes. So well, how I do we... Have, but I think you said it incredibly well. Oh, I appreciate that. I imagine you could have said it better. I, and then you, essentially you did say it. So what I'm curious about is then how do we begin to change? Because that, I don't know, that switch, that ruler, that, that, that part of us that calls the smallest things evil gets in our way. How do you help people begin to like flip that switch? Well, first, you have to really embody that evil more often. Okay. First, you can start in small ways. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to become me overnight. I mean, most people would not choose such a thing. And these are things that happen gradually. You, mm -hmm. We all know, and I think this is what, you know, the integrity market fears, of course, is that they will become accidentally quite evil like myself. Right. And they perhaps would not wish to do such a thing. But of course, what I find is that people have innately within them a drive one way or the other to go all the way one way or another way. And most people, and you know, contrary to the worldview that everyone in the world is terrible, I mean, everyone is terrible, but not, not in the sense that everyone is evil, that humanity is evil. In fact, humanity is quite not evil. On oh. the whole. Okay. Is that disappointing? Well, well yes, of course. But if everyone okay. were evil, then I wouldn't have a market. You know. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah. So, you know, it would, by then we would all be evil. It wouldn't be a question. I wouldn't have to train anyone how to be evil. I'm, right. I'm fine with things as they are because, you know, I prefer having minions. And it's the evil curious that provide that kind of service, of course. So... You know, this works in my favor, and I'm always looking out for my favor. But to, you know, to your point, and to my point, is that you know, most of the world is, is not evil, and most people aren't going to go over the edge. Mm. I, as much as I would like to have you know, many, many people working with me, and I do, I, I work with people all the time to train them in how to be uber villains. And, and people ask me why I say uber villains. Well, I feel like the super villain super is for supers and uber is for us of course right we okay. want the ultimate not not super anything we don't wear capes most of us anyhow right. um so anyhow to become you know there are those among us who really truly know that it is their calling to become an uber villain right for the most part i would just be happy as happy as i can be which is not generally that happy but I would be contented if more of the world was less mediocre <laughs> and and getting in touch with that evil spark not being overly concerned about you know every little thing you say to the degree that that it, it becomes really tiresome to converse right uh, it becomes tiresome to engage with others just do what you want to do if it takes a little bit of evil to get you to follow through on your own desires, then I say more than merrier for that. Yeah, well, and this is, and this might be a tender subject because this is reminding me about some of the, so I'm just gonna say the word kink. So some people have found that exploring more evil or exploring their boundaries in, in the world of kink and play opens up their ability to express themselves in life. I'm not sure entirely why that jumped out at me when, when you were talking, but this idea of when you stretch the boundaries of who you're being and you try on new characters, yes, it gives people more access to who they can be in life. If they're not, if they're not confined by the idea of who they think they are or who they think they're supposed to be. Absolutely. Yes, now, that is the key. Playing with your your own evil alter ego, as it were, allows you to expand the boundary 
of what was maybe accessible to you before. And the word you used uh, wasn't constriction. It was something else, but like constriction. And what we're looking at is freedom, increasing okay. freedom. Okay, yeah. And, and when you stretch that boundary and you play that part, when you come back from the play, for some of you it won't be, it'll just be you stepping to more of who you are. But for many of you, it will feel like play. And the parts of, of that experience of recognizing that you were meant to take up a bit more space than you thought. Mm -hmm. You were meant to be a little louder than you thought. You were meant to be heard. Those kinds of experiences will change you for the positive. Why you would want to do anything for the positive, I have no idea, but that, I find that that appeals to many. Yeah, well, or, or whatever, how about pleasure? Oh, pleasure, because, absolutely. Because there's like, what positive means might not, might not, I mean, it doesn't sound like it resonates with you, but then it's also very confusing and, and constricting of, of a lot of people because they're like, oh, this equals positive. And then they do yes. things like deny all of their emotions, which include anger and sadness and guilt and all those sorts of things that like, ah, oh, those are terrible. They hurt. I'm going to squish them down. Just part of this like la repressing equals lack of freedom and expression, right? Yes. It's a, I find that most people have an addiction to guilt. Mm. An yeah. addiction to guilt, an addiction to shame. And think about the people that you encounter that have been seemed unpleasant to you. Perhaps you went to buy a car and mm -hmm. you did, and you realized that the salesman gave it to you $2,000 over the market value, which most people wouldn't do these days because most people are conscientious shoppers. But however, you go home and you realize you've been overcharged. Is he thinking about you? No, he is totally free. And I just think that everyone should be free yeah. in such ways. But for everyone, that's going to look different. Perhaps, you know, he sleeps soundly at night doing such a thing. Perhaps for you, it's just you accidentally took the chapstick home. Just keep it. That's fair. Yeah. Just keep you it. Accidentally find the... That's a small everyday life example, but... Right, right. I... Uh... I'm having an issue with my headphones, sorry. I was at a, a spiritual retreat and I didn't know that there was gonna be the gluten-free version of a piece of cake. And so I, I decided to have, I mean, I was like, okay, I can, I can manage this, I can, have, I can have a piece of cake, but then you know what it did? It was like, like oh, there's the gluten-free cake. So I just decided, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have both. Even though I didn't tell them ahead of time that I was gluten-free because I wasn't the one that filled out the form. And uh, I had both pieces of cake. They were differently good. They were all right. It's a lot of calories because of two pieces of cake. I, anyway, you're, Do you, this is you had all that cake. I'm, I'm so, I mean, those are the kinds of choices I mean. Yes. Well, and I, felt, I um, felt pretty great about that. The person I went with I thought that I should have left the gluten-free cake because I didn't tell them that I was on that list of people who needed that cake. So... I congratulate you for your excellent yeah. decision making in that scenario. Yes, that is exactly the kind of thing I mean. Okay, so that's like it's a like mild, mild level of like embracing some evil. Yes, absolutely, and and a little more of that can't hurt you. Truth. I don't know how much cake could hurt a person. I haven't done that experience or experiment. I would say don't worry about such things. Eat the cake, as you said. Pleasure is the key word. It's true. Expanding so freedom, expanding your sense of pleasure. These are all things that we, we deny all too often in the interest of feeding our addiction to guilt and shame. That's, that sounds freaking brilliant, but perhaps you knew that. This is the life that I live every day. So do you want more people to embrace their evil in in their marketing or in their business? Or is this specifically a, like a personal journey to take for the, the paths they've already chosen? Yes, I feel like this, these are all qualities that you can take into your business and into your marketing. It seems counterintuitive perhaps because obviously if people think of marketing as being uh, trying to win the love and the support of of your audience and your potential clients and really connecting with them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, don't think of it that way. You want to 
actually hypnotize them, oh, okay. hypnotize them into loving you and maybe even fearing you giving, you, giving yourself that permission to let them love and fear you and worship you. But at the very least, to hypnotize them into thinking that there can be no other but you doing the thing that you do. They would like nothing other than to connect and to do it your way, to be in, in your circle. Right. And, and you do that through being more magnetic. And the magnetism comes from being willing to take up all that space and not to be afraid of giving people the FOMO, you know? Mm -hmm. What the kids call it these days, right? The FOMO? FOMO. Uh, fear of missing out, I believe. Oh, yes. Fear of missing out. That's right. I just, I knew, I knew it meant something like that. Yeah, I, I had to look it up. FOMO just sounds like, uh, like a dessert topic. It does. Or like that a, is true. Like a fake uh, sour cream. To it me. does sound like Somehow. a fake sour cream. Which is weird. I, 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 I like how your brain works. Yes. Yes. So, you know, as you can tell, I, that's the one thing I, I don't keep up with things very well because I'm very interested in my own affairs, uh, as, as I should be, of course. But sometimes I don't quite use the terminology correctly. But yes, being willing to magnetize people to you and, and to be more concerned with your vision. Mm -hmm. What is your vision? What is it that you wish to do in the world? What is it that you want to see fully realized in your empire? What do you want to make of your business? What do you want to achieve and to accomplish and how will you take over the world in your small or large part? Right. And giving yourself permission to stay focused on that so focused and so in your zone that people become hypnotized by you, that you are willing to be loud and to share about it in whatever way fits in is appropriate for you and your business and your market. Uh, from the standpoint of, do you want to do it or not? Not going for the market from the standpoint of trying to convince anyone, because there's no point in that. Convince no one, only convince yourself. Fair. So now I want to backtrack here and make sure that I've, I've understood what you're saying here. So I, I too, I am actually trained in hypnosis and I, I happen to have a sense of what that means for me and what I, what I believe that skill set and, and that ability and, and language patterns and all of that. I, I have a scope of that and perhaps you do as well, but there's a, there's a spin that most people think about when you say, when you say literally you want to hypnotize people into, um, and to, to being part of your dominion over the world, right? Yes. What I heard from you, just in case people don't know, I mean, like they haven't studied hypnosis specifically, or maybe they have a different uh, sense of what that word means. You were saying that the more that you fully embody your own vision and what you want to pull off in the world, that alone will magnetize people into your circle and into what you have to offer. Absolutely. So that, I'm not saying that I'm beyond actual hypnosis. In fact, now that I know that you have this quality, this skill set, I'm even more interested in talking to you after the interview because I believe that you would have a great place in my, in my, uh, my team, as it were, yeah. if, if, you should say, if you should so want it. But I love being influential, yeah. Yes, yes. So, you know, those are things that I don't know hypnosis because, frankly, that's too much work to learn <laughs> And Fair. I don't wish to, but this is why I bring people on my team to take care of those sorts of, uh, sorts of things. We make sure that our advertising and marketing is, is adequately hypnotizing in every sense of the word. However, sure. for most people, that is not necessary. Okay. Simply, yes, like you say, being willing to be completely and utterly focused on your goal and to become more magnetic and more boldly, awfully you, mm, whatever yeah. that looks like for you. It, it might just be that you feel like you're being awful in the beginning and it takes a little getting used to, to be so out there in front of people. Yeah. And for those of you who are a little bit high vibe or, or may or may not, you may or may not be resonating with this. this. This makes sense to me that the more that you embrace all of the aspects of who you are, the more freedom that you can have, the more impact that you can have, the more magnetizing you are because you're fully congruent. My curiosity is like, you can be more awfully you, or you can be more awe-filled 
and you, because it's the same kind of alignment when you're congruent. You can be awful or off-filled, right? Absolutely. Yes. I'll agree with you there. Okay, great. Just in case some people don't necessarily want to be awful, they can be filled with awe. Filled with awe. That, that, that is a good first step. And then, of course, you take it from there wherever you would like it to go. But I, I, I recognize that it's a little odd that I'm speaking at this conference and that this may or may not fully resonate with the audience that we're speaking to, but I believe there is something in here for everyone. Absolutely. Well, and, and it really is a great exercise to become more in rapport with those darker parts of yourself. Because I, I've noticed when people are resisting their own inner impulses because they've labeled them bad, it, some, uh, it, it manifests in a lot of ways. Uh, immune issues. Sometimes people don't poop. Pooping's important. They have... They can't fully express themselves even when they are focused on something that they believe is positive because there's blockage, internal blockage that, that they keep trying to point in some direction. And you're saying, if you begin to fully embody those things that you've deemed evil, you're going to find more freedom. Essentially, it's a laxative for your dreams. <laughs> to go with your metaphor earlier. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, I, that's Beautiful, a laxative for your dreams. That that sounds a little bit like, like a T-shirt embracing evil, the laxative for your dreams to come true. Right on, right on. I love it. I really appreciate you being here. I'm curious. Now there have been there have been many points fruitful. Is there is there a takeaway? Some some last moments. Either, you know, a lot of people have have offers. Is there a last? bunch of thoughts or some sort of technique or something specific you want to leave us with. Yes, absolutely. So my advice to you, if you're interested in exploring what this pathway may hold for you, wherever you fall on the spectrum, is to try adding one new thing to your routine at a time and then see how it feels. Reduce the over-pleasing tone of your emails by 25%. Try saying thank you, yes, or if you wouldn't mind, or just this, or please, if you don't mind that. Just look at the words that you're using in your messages every day to your clients, to your friends and colleagues, and over please a little bit less. 25% is a good start. Do things like leave the party 30 minutes early. You probably wanted to leave two hours ago anyways. Just leave 30 minutes early instead of two hours that you really wanted to leave. And maybe over time, then you can leave earlier and earlier. Yeah, okay. Don't let people pick your brain for free over coffee. Mm. From now on, say no to that. Yeah, that's big. Say no to that and make them pay you money to pick your brain, especially if it is your area of expertise and that it has been well advertised that you are an expert in this department no brain picking. No free and, brain picking. And okay. my last bit of advice, you can see the theme here. It's about not wanting to overplease or to worry about other people. So try laughing a little too loud. And then when everyone in the restaurant is staring at you, just stare back like you might eat their children. Try something like that. Yes. Or just start laughing too loud, that's fine too. I do it all the time. That's amazing because people are always saying, they see children and like, oh, I would like to eat you, which I've always found confusing. But if, yes. but oh, if you embrace- Oh, you're so tasty. I want to eat your little body parts. Yes, it's very strange to me. Yeah, but, so, but, but since that seems Don't to be innate- the child. I mean, be consistent. If right. you're going to eat the child, eat it. If you're not going to eat the child, don't threaten to eat the child. I mean, it feels- yeah, it's, it's a very off-putting. I mean, yeah. I, I actually do, I like some children, so I don't really approve of such things. But if you want to terrify people, just look at them like you're going to eat their children. Hmm. Yeah, seems, seems natural, easier to find. Absolutely, because most I, of us find that repellent, so it, 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 it brings up a little extra darkness. So people want to eat other people's children, but nobody wants their child to be eaten. 
it's so it'll true. just it'll yes. just this is a law of nature hmm oh well, that's fair i would assume so but the point being is really about the laughing yeah just oh yeah yeah capsule, sorry. laugh be mirthful if you will and give not one concern for how people receive you Perfect. That, where would you like insult what someone is wearing if you like Maybe that's a little too extreme for some of you, then that's quite fine. But just basically knock it down, knock the pleasing down by 25% in every area you can think of and see what happens for you. That seems doable. 25% less of a lot of things seems, seems like a, a decent goal to start with. I will guarantee you if you knock it down 25%, your revenue will go up 25%, mm. possibly more. Just try it on for size for six months and then get back six months, get back to me and let me know how it goes. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a brilliant return. So I noticed that you have also offered, many people are offering a, a free gift. Uh, shall, I mention, shall I mention the free gift? Sh yes, please tell everyone the title. I will happily tell you more about it. Alrighty, so your free gift you're offering everyone today, so you get to have this. Excited? Embrace your inner evil genius guide. Uh, that is tips on creating your own inner evil alter ego who can help you overcome crippling niceness, niceness and step into the power that will help you conquer your world. Yes. Um, so yes. it's not, it's, it's not quite done as of this recording. So okay. what you'll have to do if you would like this guide is to yes. sign up for the list. The button will be provided. The link will be provided. So somewhere the, the link. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And, and you will receive a notification as soon as that is available. And also you get the benefit of being on my well tolerated or liked, depending on where you fall on the spectrum, but you will be on my list of people that are less likely to see any kind of backlash from me in my future endeavors. Oh, wait, so I'm sorry, repeat that. So you flash from me, you know, because I am an evil, evil villain. I'm not just an evil coach. I do oh. coach uber villains, but sometimes I do have a plan or two that I put into effect. And you, you just, this is just a good way to be on my good side. I'm just calling that out as another bonus of signing up for my list. That's awesome. Earlier when I was doing some research for this, I already, I already signed up. I signed up I on your all list. All that you had. Yeah, and so that I immediately liked you more. Oh, well, great, good, good on me. So I, there, fact, then I met you, and I actually like you quite a lot more. So that's that's not something that I say every day. So you should feel proud. I, 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 I love being liked. I appreciate that very much. And I uh, don't like it too much. It's not good for you. Fair. Fair, I, I should write that down, but I didn't, uh, I don't have a pen. But you can like me liking you, I'm fine with that. Okay, but 25% but less of everybody caring whether they like me. Absolutely. And then 25% increase in uh, my return. Brilliant. Yes. Okay, so if, you, if people sign up on this list and they get, they'll get the Embrace Your Inner Evil Genius Guide. Yes. They'll, they'll be able to help themselves find an evil alter ego that will help them overcome yes. crippling niceness. We'll start with your secret inner evil alter ego. Ah. Just, just one that can help you write that email at 25% less nice. Mm. Perfect. Cousin, and then you're getting emails out. So that guide's helpful. Also, they get to potentially not be included in any um, evil doing that you may Correct. Uh, in, in the future. In the future. I mean, okay. I'm not tracking this very closely, so I make no 100% guarantees. Okay. But yes, we, we try to keep up with those things. Sure. To the best of our ability. Okay, that's fair. I think that's fair. It's just like you would consider these people on your list potentially hurting them less or maybe not at all. Yeah. Yes. Then the intention is not at all. Oh. Okay. The intention is not at all. If you unsubscribe, though, you know, I can't speak for what could happen to you then because it's more insulting to subscribe and then immediately unsubscribe. Not that I really care what people think, but you know, I do find it a little rude. 
like why did you sign up in the first place if you didn't actually want it so i might get a little mm. but so then, i may hmm. i feel well i can be a hypocrite all i want <laughs> That's i mean fair. that is one of the benefits of being an evil genius you don't have to worry about integrity or hip hypocrisy or consistency yes i can change my mind tomorrow Oh, that's perfect. So more of that for everyone. Absolutely. I love it. Freedom, there, more freedom. More freedom. Now, I love it. Have you any other last, last thoughts? I, I think you've captured it, but just in case, before, before we part ways and say, good, say goodbye. I believe in you and your ability to reach your full potential and just try Try this new thing. It might be a little bit difficult at first, but I encourage you to reach inside and to find that part of you that is so focused on your vision that you will do anything to achieve it. And then just do something. Do something more than you would have yesterday. That would be my last, my last takeaway for you and your audience. Perfect. Thank you very much for your time. I love... The, the world, I, I think you fully inhabit it. It's beautiful. I can see it there. Thank you very much. And so this is this is our goodbye, provided as I'm, I'm filling in for Teresa. Join us in the Soul Leaders and Visible Visionaries group on Facebook, which you can find by typing in the search bar, Soul Leaders and Visible Visionaries. We'll be continuing the conversation there. So come share with us. And... Yeah, it's it's been lovely having having you here, and I want to I want to say I I am I'm very grateful and honored to be able to to speak with you, Lady Doom. It's been Thank absolutely my pleasure, and you've been quite a lovely host. Thank you oh. for your time. Thank you very much. I'm Adrienne Gunn, filling in for Teresa Pridemore. I love that you joined us today. I hope you have an amazing day, and you know, embracing your inner evil will allow you to do just something more tomorrow than you did today.